This is the sound of worlds beyond number. Previously on The Wizard, The Witch, and The Wild One, our heroes arrived in Port Talon seeking Wavebreaker, a sword capable of ending Ame's curse. They found the sword in the possession of crime boss Will Gallows, who was willing to part with it for a price, namely the guild mage Payne, a man deep in debt to Gallows. Seeking Payne, our heroes arrived at the Chantry of the Scepter's Chorus, a wizard's guild of the Seraz Imperium, where guild mage Morrow treated our heroes to a fireworks show and the glittering words, Welcome Suvi. Beautiful white sand, which to any observer that would recognize it, you can see has been transported at great cost all the way from the desert of the Citadel, now lines a beautiful rock garden, quartz crystal slabs covered in the sheen of falling water, fountains into clear crystal pools, a single tree rising from the white sand and flagstone marble pathways moving in gentle curves that nonetheless bear the perfect symmetry of citadel geometry. You see this garden and our three adventurers, uh, Suvi, Ame, and Ursulan wearing his human glamour, mm -hmm. correct? Uh, at Ame's feet is our friend, the fox, uh, <laughs> as yet still unnamed, but that's okay. Uh, and he, uh, and before you are a number of white-robed Imperium wizards, all of whom were obviously trained at the Citadel, but no longer work for that institution, instead working directly for the crown of the Saraz Imperium. The sanctum in front of you, this Chantry of the Scepter's Chorus, uh, has given you a great warm welcome. Guild Mage Moro in his white robes, his sort of uh, a little bit sweaty, plump, blushing face uh, as he clasps to, you can tell his hands are soft just by looking at them. <laughs> just soft hands. Goes, uh, <laughs> looks and says, oh, you, you must forgive the theatrics. It's just such a blessing, an honor, a privilege. I, of course, uh, count myself amongst the untold, I'm sure, thousands uh, that amongst those educated by the Citadel know of your late mother and father, whose memory is an honor to the Imperium forever and ever. Uh, however, I would say that my recollection and adulation of your noble parentage uh, actually goes one step further, and I'm something of a, uh, a collector of some of their works. Of this many, I'm sure you've, and I'm sure people tell you all the time, although you actually live at the Citadel, so maybe no one, everyone there sort of, you know, but I count myself very fortunate to be able to meet you. And an apprentice to the Archmage Silence. I'm rambling, I'm rambling, I'm rambling. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's fine. Go on. Um... I just shoot Ame, like, the biggest shit-eating grin. Like, yeah, this is how, <laughs> this is what it's supposed to be. <laughs> After a long time on the land, yeah. kind of slumming it, it's nice to be back in the bosom. <laughs> I have never seen anything of this sort. I am from a village that has about 500 people, so of course everybody knows each other. But the fact that thousands of people know Suvi, that's a, that's is there, a bit of a lot. Is there food and drink? being laid out at all or is it we got tea uh there yes there there are some small sort of rose chime glasses these sort of very beautiful little ceramic things that have a tea that you're like oh there's a slight green tint to otherwise what looks just like hot water mm. <laughs> uh ursula's not interested I'm going to pass on it's that. It's also espresso. <laughs> yes. Espresso? Would anyone like an espresso? Yes, please. Uh, sure, I'll try it. Absolutely. I, I'd like to try one. Uh, you see, the Guild Mage Morrow says, uh, 
three espressos. Oh, Fox, you wanna? Fox looks up and says, doesn't seem like I'm being offered one, so. You can have some of mine. Jeez. I'm offended. What? I wasn't offered one. Uh, You see that uh, looking at the talking familiar, (laughs) Guild Mage Mara turns and says, ah, uh, oh, I'm so sorry. Are you, are you polymorphed, transmogrified, transmutated? And Fox looks up and says, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Fox. Okay. Uh, Language. He's uh, 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 mm. he, he, this is my familiar. You're, His, fa- you're familiar? Yes. Gifted with the power of speech. Yes. <sighs> ah. Uh, apprentice Archmage, would you be kind enough to instruct me as to the names of your companions that they might be welcomed into the arms of the Scepter's Chorus? This is Ame, a witch of Toma. A witch? It's a pleasure to meet you. And I I touch my hand to my brow, uh, and I say, Naram. Uh, You see, he looks at you saying Naram, and you see he goes, Ah, is that a customary greeting in Toma? Oh, no, it's a customary greeting for here. Ah, (laughs) I've, I've... Unaware. Uh, well, a uh, hearty naram to you as well. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Ursulon, my guardian. You can just call me Bear. Hmm. Well, Bear, it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Um, Apprentice Archmage, uh, if there is anything you desire, may I ask, well, first of all, Let's see you fed and tended to before any business is d- d- yeah, that dived sounds into. Great. Uh, Ursula's <laughs> getting up and kind of just trying to figure out where we're supposed to be walking to. Is it, is it this way? Uh, 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 no, no, no. We mustn't use the hallways. That's uh, here. We we do things a little bit differently at the Scepter's Chorus. Uh, you see that he uh, walks over to one of the shimmering slightly slanted slabs of quartz crystal that glows with a kind of pink and yellow warm light as water perfectly evenly cascades down in pure flatness. Just perfect unrippling water streaming down the crystal. He goes, uh, pushes a hand on it and simply walks through the quartz. I gesture towards it uh, to uh, allow my friends to pass through before me. Uh, I'm gonna like bad at it <laughs> a couple of times. Does it? Does my hand? Can I like? If I put my, like part of my hand through, does it like it just goes away? Like it's somewhere else? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. I surreptitiously poke at it as well. I do not want to seem a yokel, mm. but also I have never seen the like of this before. Let me be very clear. The more you poke at it, the more I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Sorry, it's just, <laughs> Suvi, this is unlike, I mean, we, I mean, even at Grandmother Wren's cottage, something like this, I mean, I'm going to put half, like, maybe <laughs> half my body in, half, this is, I mean, I'm in two places at once. Um. This has been what my home has been like since that summer. Wow. And I actually reach down and I'm going to get some of that, like, Aurelian sand and just sort of, like, hold it in my hand. It has the feel in your hand of the finest silk. I'll let it run through. Kind of dust my hands off. Uh, we should go. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah. I'll just make the other half. <laughs> I, I, com- <laughs> I complete yeah. uh, the transition into the new space. Fox looks at it and goes, sort of tucks his tail and flattens his ears. And it's like, every, every instinct I have is telling me not to walk into a wall. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. This is really terrifying, but it's okay. I trust Suvi. Yeah, trust me, dude. Oh, brother. <laughs> and I see the fox. The fox okay. uh, leaps through the wall and then <laughs> uh, and then gets on the other side with Ursuline and is like, uh, and you see that Morrow is waiting there saying, is everything all right? Uh, yes, it's quite... Where in... Well, I haven't done one of those before. 
a sort of wall passing. Ah, oh, yes. Well, of course, uh, this is uh, just simply a precaution. The wall passing, a true pass wall I have seen on a number of occasions. This is, uh, I can't believe you've never seen this before. This is merely, and it's, I think Sufi steps through. It's like, have your friends never seen a simple illusion? Oh, they are from uh, the furthest edges of the empire. <sighs> well, then, it is a joy, a privilege, and an honor to be able to show you the true hospitality of the Imperium. Uh, as you're led through, what's going on with our heroes here? Do you, are you like paying close attention? Are you keeping an eye on Moro? <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think, I, I mean, I Arslan's adulthood has not been fun. And <laughs> in the last like, you know, weeks since he re-met, uh, met back up with his friends, uh, there is, uh, I think, a wonder and excitement to being in these new spaces and, like, feeling uh, like he's somewhere that only Suvi can, can... Only Suvi is allowed access to places with wall passings and fireworks. So I think it is... Uh, I think I'm just looking for other treasures, and then I, I am getting a bit hungry, uh, so I'm also looking for food and wine. Um, but no, there's no... <laughs> no inside checks. <laughs> <laughs> they let me pass through the damn wall. They must love me. <laughs> uh, I think it's very obvious that uh, as long as none of the guild mage's eyes are on Suvi, she is fidgeting uh, quite anxiously with uh, her her father's ring and uh, kind of fussing with something under her coat that you that the audience would know is her her mother's necklace, the pendant. At the mention of her parents, uh, she's sort of retreating a bit into herself, but will immediately come back to this like incredibly rigid and proud stance whenever uh, Maro like looks at her or talks to her. I turn to you and I ask, so this is the sort of thing you grew up with after the cottage? Yeah. It's really beautiful. It seems like because to me, obviously, hospitality is expected, and, and but everybody seems so excited about you. And also, you grew up around a lot of other people that knew magic, huh? Yeah. Um, I want to apologize again. I think I was very weird uh, during the summer about uh, magic, but this is why. Oh. I kind of gesture at, like, just some weird thing that's lit for no reason, like, eh, it's kind of <laughs> How is that lit, and why is that lit like that? <laughs> oh, the, the, that, well, this is, um, do, are you asking for... Just tell me anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, this... I've just never seen something lit in that way. Uh, well, you know, I, it's, so... I don't actually design the chantries. Um, that's <laughs> actually done back at the primary, at the prime chorus, which is in Sarazmir. Um, but I, I assume that the sort of evokers and arcanists and artificers that uh, do this sort of work had their... Re it looks beautiful. Uh, uh, you can see Morrow <laughs> is in... Because the, the, you know that the reason it's lit that way is to be impressive. Yeah. But when someone asks you that, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, yeah. you're not... Like walking to a rich person's house and being like, why is that gold? And you're like... <laughs> I need you to know that I'm better. Like you can't say, <laughs> yeah. you can't say the truth. So you see, Morrow's just fumbling. Like I, it's, I'm sure it's, it's very <laughs> integral and, and significant, uh, significant uh, purpose. And to all things, and the design, of course. And there is a great deal of magic mm. you, um, throughout. Um, <laughs> uh, apprentice Archmage. Mm. Um, fascinatingly, your, so your companions that you uh, have arrived here with are, are they? Uh, I know, of course, that Ame, our guest, is not of the Citadel. Naturally, um, uh, is the just your 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 guardian? Is is he of the Azure Battalion, or he's of the Citadel, or has the uh, or or have you procured his service? I suppose. Well, these are the questions. But I want to do my best in this moment to. Uh, I gotta summon up. I've spent so much time with the Archmages. I just want a withering glance that will shut him up and keep me from having to explain myself. Okay, 
This is going to be intimidation 15. Okay. You need a 15 intimidation, but you are going to roll with advantage because this guy loves your shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he loves my shit. And we got it with a 16. Hey. Yeah. All right. He goes, he goes. <laughs> Manners was I raised in a barn? You are hungry. Uh, What's wrong with being raised in a barn? <laughs> and he, uh, uh, you see that uh, Fox looks at you and says, Barn, that's the height of culture. That's where all the fanciest animals. Yeah, it's warm in there. Exactly. They got hay. You got hay. Oh, you got hay. What else do you need? You arrive at a a beautiful crystalline chamber that has a long banquet table made out of that same sort of rose quartz material lit from the inside. It it sort of is a incredibly long rectangle that then erupts into more natural crystalline shapes that anchor it to the floor on either side. So it's like this massive slab that has two roots on either end of this long banquet table. And you see a number of hovering circular white cushions. There is a circle floating horizontally and one floating at an angle to it vertically to create a chair sort of floating in space of just a seat and back, each independently hovering. Uh, Ursuline is going to go and push push them separately. <laughs> Do they go back into place? Uh, you actually see that the seats cannot be moved, but that the back can rotate slightly in orbit around the seat. Suvi. Mm. <laughs> it moves. Uh, a, uh, a, 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 a sort of like very sage looking, but quite beautiful wizard with a shaved head and a little bit of green eyeshadow underneath comes over and says, sir, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It moves. Thank you. Did you know it moved? Thank you. Of course. Thank it, you. Of course. Thank you. And I don't know that Ursula's ever had someone speak in this much politeness tangle yeah. of, of thank you, meaning stop doing that. Um, you're welcome. You're welcome. As he keeps pushing it, you're, do you want me to move it more thank this way? Thank you. Thank you. More the thank other you. way? And you see that uh, she puts a hand on the thing. It's like, thank you. Help me. Yes. Thank, hey, you. Oh, thank you. Exactly thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir? A little more left? Thank you. A little you. more right? I don't know how to say thank you. And he's just, yeah. <laughs> that, that Mara pulls and says, um, uh, Ursulan, you, uh, sorry, Bear, you may uh, be seated uh, oh. on this. And obviously, feel free to rotate um, to your comfort level All right. uh, within reason. <laughs> of, of course, I, I don't want to break anything. You, you, uh, you could not break it. Really? Yes. Can I try? <gasps> I'm... I hear Sufi gasp. <laughs> I never. I'm, I apologize. I'm gonna sit down and kind of stop touching things for oh, a second. No. <laughs> um, give me an Arcana check, Ame. Oh, that's a natural twenty. Yeah. You are looking at twenty floating chairs. You know that the magic of this world is unlimited. You don't have to be scarce or precious with with magic and, you know, the world of the spirits is endless and there's bountiful plenty in a world of wonder, but it would never, ever have occurred to Grandmother Wren to teach you how to make a chair out of anything other than some wood. <laughs> <laughs> I have an appreciation for aesthetics and for art and for using magic to do wondrous things simply for the purpose of doing it. But I can tell, even if Ursulan can't, that this is meant to make an impression. As I said, who are they trying to impress? It feels a little vulgar, I think. I appreciate hospitality, but in some ways it's expected. This goes above and beyond there's something here that I don't quite understand. It's, I understand the nature of magic and I understand using magic for hospitality, but I don't understand this extra thing that's there that they're trying to do with magic that's not quite for others' benefits. 
Uh, plates of food are brought out to you uh, by seemingly just telekinetic force. The plates just sort of float out from an opening and land in front of you. Uh, Ursulan, Ame, Suvi, you see that there is a sort of spiced and seasoned chickpea puree, a hummus-like kind of thick, uh, rich substance on the platter in front of you that has a couple small pieces of food laid into it. There appears to be like a very delicate seared piece of fish, a couple of sauteed greens, and a a lovely little selection of like cured candied fruits as a garnish along the edge of the plate. Uh, Ursuline's going to watch Suvi uh, to see how she eats it. Ursuline immediately sees the hummus like dish and just gets two fingers ready to just kind of like <laughs> do a run and then remembers the gasp and is just watching Suvi to see how she eats and how and the ways in which she is like now studying her to take his cues. Uh, Suvi's doing her best to try to telegraph, like looking at the sort of like array of cutlery. She's going to give a little point of like this one, and this one, and this one, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. and then points at like the little the little finger bowl. Like you can go with your fingers into the finger bowl, and is just being trying to be very discreet in like here's how we attack each one of these. So she'll take a bite of everything just to show this is how we eat uh, in the citadel. Uh, I think Ame, you just with your passive insight, you clock Guild Mage Mara, who's the only other wizard in the room who sits. There's a couple attendants by the door, but he sits at the table with you. You notice him just clocking Suvi, kind of teaching Ursulan how to eat. Um, uh, and you see that a tiny little metal bowl of what just looks like a sort of chopped up, almost like a chum or like a seafood slurry, just lands in front of the fox. And <laughs> I was like, where is that going? Like, who's going to eat chum? <laughs> yeah. Uh, lands in front of the fox, and he looks up at you, Ame, and is once again like, I don't know why I got a different thing, but this is <laughs> wonderful and exactly what I wanted. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> and starts to chew on it. I look over at Tui. Get some of that. Do I get some of that? No. No? No, absolutely. Looks good. Okay, understood. Try the fish. It's not enough fish on it. Okay. It is like a bite and a half. It's a bite. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Suvi looks absolutely stymied like, that's a really good fucking point. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you realize, like, you're honestly pretty fucking hungry, too. But also you realize, like, this is about what you ate at the Citadel. Because when you're kicking it on cushions reading books all day, you, you don't necessarily... <laughs> Yeah, you could see that moment, like there's like a vertigo pan behind Suvi's eyes. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, I'm going to try to look over at the other wizards and kind of just gesture them over. Um, you see that one of the attendant wizards comes over. Like, yes, apprentice Archmage. Can we, we've been uh, traveling quite <clears throat> rough for the last few days. Would you, can we uh, get more? Uh, you see that, uh, she like arches an eyebrow up and the guild mage Moro says, our guests are famished, please, more, more, more. Uh, and wine, we'll also take wine. Oh, yeah. Uh, let the vino flow by all means. And you see that uh, some glasses of wine begin to float out uh, and sort of, I'm gonna say on that nat 20 arcana, you see that the wines do like, it's the first not perfect thing you've seen here. <laughs> that the flutes, it's like, there's just, you begin to see like, okay, okay, it's not infinite because it's one telekinetic stream that the plates come out on and it's not quite balanced for the wine glasses they have. <laughs> so they do kind of like tip dangerously. It's more of a half pour because they, they bob a lot as they come out of the kitchen. I clock uh, Moro watching Suvi and Ursulan and I too uh, make a show of digging into my food in a way that de- that denotes I am uncultured and I'm not familiar with this. And then I make a big show of looking at Suvi and being like, how do I, how do I do this? Why are you? Suvi has not followed your train of logic <laughs> and is simply horrified. <laughs> Ursulan is now losing his mind because he's like, wait, yeah. is that okay? Because that's how I want to eat. I I am drinking the finger bowl. Yeah. Oh my! Second bowl. I am going to 
Uh, I've been interacting with a lot of these plates with just sort of a little bit of prestidigitation to push and pull things around. Because again, we're very sumptuous with our magic. And I'm going to, the moment you reach for it, uh, without aiming to tip your fingers in, I'm just going to try to nudge it away from you. Like, don't, oh, oh, stop it, stop it. Be, uh, be normal. Be your normal. first plate's clearing very quickly. This is like some point of etiquette that maybe like Ursuline does not see, but you see very clearly of like the first plate being cleared. Uh, Maro feels that the time has come to sort of talk. Yes. And you see, he says, well, more food on the way and please enjoy your wine. It's a very delicate vintage, one of my favorites. I will admit to some micromanagement of our cellar. Our sommelier is uh, a well-meaning but somewhat greenhorned uh, <laughs> quartermaster for our, our vintner. Um let me ask if I might, to what do we owe this honor? Your visit was unpresaged and unannounced, and of course you are welcome to stay for as long as you wish, but is there anything that the humble guild mages of the Scepter's Chorus can do for you? Oh, there is definitely that half a heartbeat where I look over at my companions like, are we just gonna tell... <clears throat> An almost imperceptible nod. A nod? I mean, a... a, 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 a <laughs> reverse nod, sideways a nod. A reverse nod. Sideways nod. Yes. An almost imperceptible sideways nod <laughs> from Ame. Uh, Archmage Silence uh, saw fit to give me a bit of time to walk, ab to walk about our empire and learn more and experience more of the culture so that I can better serve it if and when he steps down. So this is a very informal trip with uh, companions that I've made uh, recently. She's lying badly. <laughs> uh, it's very obvious. So, yeah, this is, so this is a whole hog lie. The yeah. whole hog. Whole, the, you're getting the whole hog. You're Snout getting the no, butt. Yeah. Snout, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad lie, and we didn't talk about our lie no. before. And you can see Suvi floundering because she's not used to being cunning. For sure. Um, go ahead and give me a deception check. Can I have it with disadvantage? <laughs> yeah, if you want a disadvantage. I do. I want it to be bad. Great. Well, it doesn't matter. I got a four on both dice. Oh. Uh, <laughs> six. <laughs> A walkabout for an apprentice archmage. Uh, incredible uh, to to journey on something of, of a pilgrimage. Uh, I I can only imagine the 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 wonders that you have found. And uh, were your companions selected for this envoy by the citadel, or have you seen fit to uh, purchase their services on your travels? Oh, purchase services. I. I'm hoping to forge new connections in some of the outskirts of the empire that might prove useful later. Oh, Sufi's just looking around like, help, 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 uh, help, help, right. help. That's uh, right. Toma is a very humble little town, and I've been the only magic user in it for many years. I've recently come into my own, and I would also sort of like to do a walkabout of the world and learn more about the nature of magic as uh, other powerful users wield it, as opposed to just simple country witches. Give me a deception check. That's not one. <laughs> <laughs> We're good at this. He looks at you and says, not the only witch in Toma. Well, no. As I said, I recently came into my own. I see. You were you were you the witch of the village of Toma or no? Now I am. Yes. Oh my. Yes. Has something happened? Well, we live a long life, but we are not immortal. Oh. Um well, I don't know if you had a relationship to the woman we now speak of, but uh, I'm very sorry for, or you know, my, condol my condolences or congratulations if you defeated her or took her place. No, no, they were, um, they were uh, close. 
Oh, oh, understood. Um, <gasps> Grandmother Wren was actually Ame's uh, mentor. Ah! You knew Grandmother Wren? Uh, by reputation. Um, not personally, no. Um, but I knew that there was, uh, uh, upon taking this station in a calm, there was a brief of some of the local uh, hedge mages and other uh, uh, sort and assembly, um, uh, those who w wielded various powers, and, and mostly from a, from a, a, a military uh, uh, angle. We're not, uh, Grandmother Wren was not listed as a threat at all. Uh, uh, not not listed as an enemy or, or anything of that nature. Why would local mages be considered as threats? Um, well, age, you know, Asian saboteur of Gauthmai and Ruv are ever prowling at the edges of empire and a calm, while, of course, being the, you know, uh, province of the Imperium, uh, is nevertheless <laughs> certainly more contested than some colonies in the mainland. So we must be ever watchful. Um, but there was never a consideration that Grandmother Wren was working with any sorcerers or warlocks or anything of that nature. It was just a, a part of the briefing to be aware that Toma was, of course, um, uh, protected by a witch. Can I insight check him? Yeah, go for it. That. Oh, I don't <laughs> trust that same, one same, little bit. Uh, I only got a eight. I got a 16. Uh, homeboy only got a, a six. <laughs> so you actually both see this. Um, he is telling the truth. Okay. However, you know that he's not telling the truth in that I think this is maybe one of the first times. Uh, I think talking about that Suvi in these rack focus, mind blowing things. Um, Suvi, you felt protected your whole life and kind of like compartmentalized and put to the side. Yeah. Uh, you're seeing that compartmentalization in a very different light right now as you realize how much you do know that other people don't know. Uh, Steel, who is the sword of the tower. She is the protector of the Citadel's secrets. She is the one of the lead battle mages of the entire empire. When Grandmother Ren died, she was like, this is a full stop like priority, both for personal reasons. You you remember your mother and father as a child. Yeah. You remember that of all the places they could have gone to keep you safe, they went to Grandmother Wren first. But you realize that this guild mage, you know, this guy who's running this chantry here in Port Talon, uh, that Grandmother Wren was a bullet point on a, on a list of just local people to be aware of that he sees her as having more in common with a hedge mage than he does with like an enemy sorcerer. Yeah. So something's not adding up. One of you is wrong and you think it's him. <laughs> yeah. I do look at Suvi and I remember even from our childhood, knowing grandmother Ren went out on mysterious missions. And there was that one time where Suvi and I had to step in and there was great magic at work, something that's far greater than illusory wine glass <laughs> prestidigitation. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I am so sorry for the loss of your mentor. That is, of course, in, in many ways, when it comes to magic, whether witchcraft or wizardry, those that have imparted those secrets to us are, in a way, the parent of our magical selves. And to think that Grandmother Wren was your teacher, I can only imagine the pain you now bear, and uh, you have my sincere condolences. Thank you. Uh, so, your travels through a calm have seen you... Uh, uh, take the Witch of Toma quite far from Toma itself. Uh, and and I, uh, uh, Bear is also a, 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 a local of uh, the Isle of Akam? Yes. Go on. I'm from Akam. Oh, uh, <laughs> what, what part are you? Are you a Port Talon native or are you from uh, elsewhere? See, he's just trying yeah, to give a little, swear. like, come on, flex. Flex a little bit. I'm from elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, a particular 
place from Silbury or from... Um, Suvi's now just drinking. <laughs> She's like, well, if someone's worse at lying than I am, we're um, locked. From Joris, Old Thriss, or... Silbury. Ah! Lovely, not very far from Tomo, so that, yeah. that makes yes. sense. Yeah. Well, that's kind of where I uh, sort of started my uh, journey. He, uh, sort of a local strongman of great renown, and I figured, uh, you know, enemies abound. Uh, I, it, feel, it felt right to have uh, muscle. Yes, I was uh, the strongest man in Silbury. That was my, uh, look, uh, <laughs> is there something I can pick up? Uh, uh, you have like a plate. Everything's like hovering <laughs> or a like eight ton slab of quartz. <laughs> so you gotta, you're gonna have to. Um, I'll, I'm gonna give it a shot at the table. Um, uh, oh. go ahead and give me an athletics check. Oh DC 30. DC 30. <laughs> You've got this. All right, I add four. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be a, um, that's gonna be a 17. 17. Yeah. And I just go, yes, I was the strongest man in Silbury Sea. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. This table weighs several tons. <laughs> well, I, well, I, well, I'm the strongest in. Uh, um, all right, yes. I, I, I believe you. I okay. believe you. Would, would you like us to fetch something for you to lift? <laughs> uh, do you have anything available? Uh, you see that he sort of puts two fingers to the side of his head and levitates a small chest of drawers over from a corner that is, again, like this sort of uh, birch bark covered thing sort of matching the quartz in the room uh, and just floats it over to you with his mind. Uh, if you'd like to lift that with your arms. Uh, <laughs> sure, sure, yes. Um, and I, I would like to pick it up and raise it over my head. Great, it's a DC 15 athletics. Great. Let's go! Um... <laughs> That'll be a that'll be an eight. Okay, well it's it's filled with cutlery right now, so, so we can, can get we, that can you, out. Can great. you get some of that out of there? Okay, great. And can I get some help? And you see the other wizards put their fingers on the side of their head, <laughs> and just the drawers all open, and a bunch of forks and knives and stuff come out. When I did the show, I already had, I already knew what I would be lifting. So. I understand. I should have mentioned that the drawer. I mean, that's why it's in here. <laughs> all right. So, here we uh, go. Okay, great. And this is going to be a DC ten. All right, this one I got. Oh man. Uh, that's a six. So uh, here's the problem. You're so tuckered out from trying to lift the table. Uh, can I can I uh, just really quietly and very quickly rip the drawers out? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Sorry, this I don't want these sliding. <laughs> okay. okay, so this is just a five. This is DC five. <laughs> Seventeen. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone applaud for Bear, the strongest man in Silbury. <laughs> yes, uh, all right. Sir, I, I hope you'll forgive us. We come from Toma and Silbury. We don't know much of the outside world, and we're a little, well, uh, awestruck by the trappings of the Empire and the magic that we see out here. So if there's any... Uh, way that you can introduce us to the the city and the sort of magic that you find here and create here, we'd greatly appreciate it. Well, uh, if it is magic you are interested in, the Scepter's Chorus has been hard at work on a very special project. <gasps> is it the flashy blinky thing out in the ocean? You see his eyes go very wide, and then he smiles. Why, it seems that your companion, Apprentice Archmage Suvi, is uh, extremely observant. The lights out at sea happen to be the culmination of more than a decade of study and observation, research, and feats of magical engineering on the part of none other than yours truly. Oh. The project is something I've been pursuing for quite some time, and about four or five years ago, we received word from the Crown that construction was finally 
given leave to begin. And begin it has. <laughs> uh, if it is of interest to you, I would be more than happy to take you out for a tour of the Derrick itself and to see what we have been working on for these long years. Would you really? That would be wonderful, Guildmage. I would be absolutely delighted. And um, it is... Uh, <laughs> uh, the Citadel holds wonders beyond measure. But um, I feel that we have done something here which... Uh, has some truly great potential b beyond merely its its short-term utility to the Imperium, but, but magically, I mean, there is something here that we have found in Port Talon that I, I believe is of true academic and arcane significance. What's Suvi's attitude towards the wizards that get drummed out of the Citadel in their, like, third or fourth year of testing. I think there's something akin to the, like, sort of casual dismissal with which he referenced hedge mages is the way wizards of the Citadel refer to any wizard not of the Citadel. So she has been just sort of staring down this true, like, dropout of a, of a human. Uh, uh, you see, this guy, the, you know that someone of this guy's station didn't make the cut on the last test, yeah. he was one victory away from being a mage of the Citadel and instead became a guild mage of one of many wings of the crown's kind of <sighs> crass, you know, uh, military mages, the people that get out there and do the grunt work, right? Yeah. You see on his face on a 21 that this man knows deep in his heart that they got it wrong. <laughs> uh, and that he feels like his ship has just come in and that ship is you because you can see on his face a look of possibility that if someone as important as you who has the ears of the people you have ears of if you see what he's been able to do here all that's going to change um, on a 21 for Ame um you see a man who, uh, you just see someone who is has a level of like hero worship and feverish adulation that is peeking out now. Like already you saw it with the welcome Suvi and everything, but there's something here that's like just a little bit more, you kind of see there's like that fever sweat on his brow a little bit. Like he's keeping some composure but it's taking him a lot of effort. For Ursuline, uh, you're not the hungriest person at this table. Mm. Ooh. Oh. Shit, that was the coolest description. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, he says, um, absolutely. Um, we, we can go right away if you wish, but I, I will say that um, the voyage and, and much of what we have, is, it's a little bit... Um, well, <laughs> I'll put my cards on the table. It's a little bit more impressive at night. So if we could wait a couple hours, we can get a ship arranged, head out on the evening tide, and you'll be able to see uh, the wonders we have worked. I am awfully interested in the showmanship I've seen thus far. I think we can wait a couple of hours or more. Absolutely. Um, and until that time, if there are any other, uh, you see at this point the doors open and a tall, very reedy mage walks in who is wearing, for the first time, like deep red guild robes. The first sort of like non-cream, mm. white, pink kind of thing you've seen. Deep red, brass rings around the shoulders of the robes, a, a brass lining to his very high collar. Uh, and you see he walks in, um, sort of olive complexion. He has like a, a long, almost a, a face sort of that seems carved for sadness and melancholy, a long face. He walks in and says, Mara, I'm going to have to bother you in the middle of one of your um, 
audiences. You see, he looks around at the three of you, seems fully uninterested, and then goes back to look at Morrow and says, uh, I'm going to need to resubmit the budget for today. And you see Morrow says, <laughs> budgets, budgets, budgets. No, 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 not at dinner. Um, I'll speak to you about it in a moment, Payne. Is that all right? And you see that... Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, that Payne turns around and says, yes, please come find me in the research library after you're finished with your audience. And he just turns and whips out of the room to walk away. Um, and who was that delightful gentleman? I'm so sorry. Uh, he is a, uh, he's our effectively bursar. Uh, that is Guildmage Payne. Um, he, he's not involved. He, he, he runs our finances. He's not a, a wizard of, of any great renown or I like his red robes. They seem very cool and impressive. Uh, they denote that his tasks here are administrative rather than arcane. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, you know, he was, uh, uh, to, you know, to have seen the wonders of the Citadel and then to uh, spend one's day with ledgers is, uh, uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm so sorry. Rooms? Yes! Rooms! <laughs> um, you see that you, like your second round of dinner, which comes in, which is a little bit more substantial. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, like two pieces of fish and some like salad and some greens and some other more, you know, there's like more roughage um, comes out. And uh, after that, he shows you two um, rooms. You see that as you're going, he casts the message cantrip. So his voice just appears in your mind, mm -hmm. Suvi. And he says... Um, your companions, would you wish for them to be stabled uh, a little bit more uh, out of reach? Do, do you want them in your suite? Um, I'm try I don't want to be rude. Adjoining. Thank you. Adjoining. So we'll put them in suites. We'll put them in full suites. Thank you. All right. And full suites for your guests. Um, and uh, he moves off and you see a, a sort of row of these larger bedrooms. It's still a chantry. You know, this is not like a hotel, but you see that there are uh, sort of small apartments. So there's like a sleeping quarters with adjoining studies that actually have like parchment and ink. And there's a small privy off to the side in a separate room. So it's not like the inns you've been in where it's like, here's a room with a bed. It's like, <laughs> oh, here's a couple of rooms in a small suite. Everything is very compact. Nothing is very palatial. Uh, you know, they're not expecting Citadel mages to waltz in here and they don't, they don't have a presidential suite to give, but they are quite well appointed, clean, uh, crystalline lighting and, you know, small decanters of water that seem to refill when poured. Uh, and he says, uh, here you are. And, um, uh, Apprentice Archmage, if I could speak with you for a moment as your guests, uh, acquaint themselves, um, to their quarters. I don't even look at them and, uh, follow the mage. I just kind of give you guys a little bit of a nod as I keep going down the hallway. Um, you see, he takes you aside and says, um, Apprentice Archmage, um, your journey, uh, equipped as you are and, and, uh, you know, um, I, I just want to make sure that you, you are safe on this mission. Your, uh, companion, your guardian, um, I he, understand, yeah. I don't know how many people live in Silbury, but if he's the strongest <laughs> one... They were picked for very specific reasons, and I think you can appreciate if I was not forthcoming with the real reasons for my travels. I didn't want to say anything, but um, I, you are not required through any means of either hierarchy, polity, or etiquette to share with me your secrets. Uh, I have questions about what your true purpose is here, but also respect beyond anything the fact that for reasons of the Citadel's own, I am not required to know. It is an honor. So you, he, he... Yeah. He knows something's up. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, he looks and says, uh, it is not for me to know, and I do not wish to know. It is merely an honor to be able to show you what we have been working on here in Port Talon. Before I lose you, 
You mentioned having something, uh, works attached to uh, my parents? Yes, <gasps> yes. Oh, I'd be delighted. I'd be ever so delighted to to show you. Um, uh, you see that he uh, says, uh, it's up in the research library. Uh, I believe the Guild Mage Payne is waiting for me to have a short conversation with him there, but I'd, I I can either bring you there or I can collect them and bring them to you. It's, it's a very small collection, but I'd be more than happy to bring it to you. I wouldn't be a bother, uh, your business dealings are your own. I would happily busy myself in the corner. Very well, then then come with me. Um, and he brings you up um, to a glorious research library. Uh, you walk through crystalline hallways, move through a couple other illusory sheening fountains and walls, and you eventually arrive at a place that... Uh, for all of its crystalline architecture, is suddenly quite dark and musty because, yes, the Rose Quartz bookshelves are there, but they're stuffed with books, thick, rich leather and velvet coverings, some tomes with ancient kind of papyrus, like, scrolled up inside. You see that there are even some books here that appear to have, like, a sheen of some metallic covering to them. Um, they appear in various wings, so there'll be an entire shelf of all leather bound and then something a little bit more local. And you see that the main sort of focus of this place are the long tables. They have clamps on the edge of them with silvery metal arms that can crane in and out with different lenses and magnifying glasses. Uh, they are all sort of at about lower, almost like sternum height as these like wizards stand with uh, these lovely sort of kid gloves on, moving over the parchment, being very careful what they touch. Nothing is being touched with a bare finger. And you can see that they are in the process of restoring ancient books and also appear to be going over a lot of sort of captured texts. It looks like there's a lot of things that have been sort of scooped up from Port Talon uh, and nearby places. Some of the wizards here uh, are bandaged and seem to have some injuries they're, they're recovering from. You see the guild mage Payne walks up and says, Morrow, is this a good time? You see, he says, <laughs> uh, Payne, I uh, would love to introduce you to uh, the apprentice archmage of the Citadel, one Suvi, daughter of Soft and Stone. You see that Payne looks over at you and goes... Ah, uh, Suvi, Apprentice Archmage. It is a pleasure and an honor to meet you. Welcome to the, uh, you see, he says, welcome to the Calabell Chantry of the Scepter's Chorus. It is a uh, pleasure to have you. Morrow, I need to get this submitted <gasps> before the uh, end of the day. Um, uh, uh, give me an insight check. Eight. Uh, I think that the offense prevents you from, yeah. like, looking into why this guy's being so rude. Yeah. Um, uh, you see that he just looks and says, uh, can I just get you to sign it, or do you want to? And you see Morrow says, yes, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. And you see he comes over with a ledger. Morrow signs it and goes, <laughs> paperwork. <laughs> uh, I find that uh, paperwork, dre dreary though it may be, uh, can usually... And I think Suvi just sort of uh, bites her bites her lip and stops talking and then kind of just turns and starts looking around. She does not know what to do about pain and she hates this man with her whole heart and has resolved to burn him apart. <laughs> um, you see that Payne waits for uh, Mara to like sign off on some stuff and then just sees himself out of the research library. Um, you know, takes a minute. He's unpleasant. Uh, oh, Payne? As he's given you offense. I will reprimand him so no. stern. No, it's it, it's already done, and it's not. You don't even have to ask for it. The way he's behaved is unacceptable. Do you want? I can go speak to him right now if you if you'd wish. That's not necessary. Mm. No, maybe you should talk to him. I'm going to go talk to him. And and here and actually, and you see, he he goes and gets a book uh, that you see is almost like one of those 
flower pressing books where it has like screws that like uh, you can tighten to press things into the page. He hands it to you and says, uh, the collection is in here. Uh, the book is much, I, ha I have ambitions for the collection that far outstrip what I actually have. There's several hundred pages, but it's only about the first 10 that are filled at the moment. Um, Thank you. Uh, and he steps out to go chase down Payne. Uh, Gilmage Payne, a word! <laughs> Uh, as he scoots on out of there. And I'll, uh, instead of staying in the room, I'm going to hustle back and uh, re reconvene with the group. Okay. Uh, with a little bit of a shitty and green because I got someone in trouble and that felt right. <laughs> <laughs> I felt right and good. You arrive back at your friend's suites, at your chambers, uh, Ame and Ursuline. Uh, hey, I, I knock on, I don't know, Ursuline's first. Um, <laughs> what's Ursula up to? One second. <laughs> uh, you see that the door opens and Ursula is dressed again, but you can tell is uh, you see like uh, bits of perspiration poking through, uh, and you see that there's a lot of furniture in the room that is n <laughs> clearly out of place. <laughs> oh, hey, buddy. Uh, uh, what's going on? Uh, let's grab Ame. We should talk. Yeah. Um, do you need a towel? Do you need dry? No, no, no. I'm I'm fine. I uh, I was just, um, uh, I was just <laughs> checking things out. And it's just very, very nice. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And she's just just gonna kind of swallow the like. Well, we don't have to talk about what's going on here, but we get it. And I'll run over and go grab Ame. Ame. I'm telling you, baths are good for you. Look, I'm going to be honest with you for a second, if I can. I don't know what a bath is. <laughs> it's something that's fun and good. Okay, now get in the sink. You see, the fox looks and says, oh, right, wait. So you just want me to get in water? Yes. And I get in water. Uh -huh. And then... I wash you with soap. See, here's the problem. I don't know what that is, and I don't like that. <sighs> okay, look, what if, what if I do it too? What if, what if I do it too at the same time, and I show you that it's good and fun? Okay, you get in the bath. You let me know when it starts and when the soap part happens. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Hi. What? This isn't over. <laughs> Are you threatening with, yeah, that's fair. Uh, can we, can we circle up? Yeah. Yeah. How you doing? Good. I like it here. Yeah. Oh, this is bad. This isn't, this is fine. This is provincial. This is fine? Oh, yeah. It Look. gets better? Oh my God, this is where the reject wizards go. Oh my. They do a rough approximation. It's, um... Okay, so you're the what we were in the woods, and you know how in your play there was a painted backdrop that kind of looked like the forest, but was nothing like the forest. Mm -hmm. This is like that. In this that, it's oh, okay. We're gonna do it word by word. Wait, which it's the painted backdrop. This is the painted background approximation of the glory of the citadel. Got it. But I get it. They miss it. That's fine. This that's not about this. Um. Hey, I, and I kind of just t try to tuck the book that I got away. We need a better cover story. I really, I like the idea that I'm the strongest man in Silbury. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It's not exactly inaccurate, except for the man part. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, and I'm assuming there is someone stronger. Yeah, I and mean, then maybe for the strength yeah. part, but we don't know that. But I like, it felt, it felt good to say. Right. But I, no, that's good. And the, uh, why we're here, what what I'm doing out of the Citadel. He asked a question and then I felt myself begin to sweat. Mm -hmm. So what is the thing we are telling people we are doing that is not finding Wavebreaker? Yes. To break a curse. That, thank you. Um, I don't have any ideas at this time. Okay. I suppose it depends on if you're dressed as a wizard of the Citadel or in plain clothes. I suppose amongst other wizards, you can cow them into silence 
as you did? A little bit for the first time. You saw that? I was, did. That okay. was thank you. pretty impressive. Oh, my God. Thank you. Sure. Why do <laughs> wizards leave the Citadel? Mostly the ones that can stay, stay. But if they leave, it's usually for some sort of fact-finding or intel before a military movement. Always acts of war. Well, you're on the leadership track, you said, yes? I am. I don't see anything wrong with the cover story that you told him. The idea of being out and about, learning about the Empire so that you can help to run it. Well, I said that, and I thought in my head that that was like a very beautiful term. And then he made a face like, that's bullshit. And then I thought about it more, and I was like, yeah, we that's nothing for us. Uh, so we're not going to do, that's not right. That's no. Perhaps you are looking for intelligence of some kind. Yes. Maybe, like, for instance, with this Moro person, he seemed very excited about whatever that Derek out in the harbor is doing. Oh, yeah. Maybe you have heard of his exciting discoveries or that there's exciting discoveries out in the edges of the empire that you've been sent to investigate. Yes, Ooh. things they are going to use in their in incursions against the scourge from um, the, uh, the other places. That's good. That's good. Yeah, and I think maybe okay. when you say it and we all are on the same page about it, you might not sweat as much. Here it Thanks. is. You know that you've got the strongest man in Silvery <laughs> <laughs> at your back. Yes, and just a simple common country witch. No, that was weird. He was talking about yeah. Mother Wren was strange, right? We all clocked that. Yeah. How come you and your parents and the people you know think of her differently than it seems like the rest of the empire does because even in the in it because even in toma she was just grandmother run to everybody i don't know but the way the way my parents spoke of her before they sent me and the way steel spoke about her in the years since i think the people that knew what she was really capable of were few and far between and went out of their way to protect that information. Okay. Well, what do we think that Derek out there is? The flashy blinky lights. Oh, some bullshit project from a, like, country wizard trying to find relevance. But we can go see it. But what about Payne? What about Wavebreaker? That was, that was the man who walked in here. Yes, and he's... A piece of shit. So mm. I'm feeling very good about uh, turning him in. Okay. We feel okay with that. Yes. Yes. But also, and this is not a, a judgment either way, we do have to understand that if he loses his connection to the Empire, then he will be killed by Gallo. Look, I would never want to see a wizard of the Empire, no matter how, disrespectful they are uh hurt unjustly but if what they're saying is true and it kind of felt like it he steamrolled morrow into signing some documents the empire is pretty clear about how we treat those that would abuse us in any way is there a way that we can ask him why he's doing it well ame what if we do the same thing we did with finley where we we create a situation in which he, yes, will likely be killed, but then we tell him that he's going to be killed, <laughs> and so he can escape. That makes things okay. <laughs> right? If you give someone a head start, that's about all they can ask for. <sighs> yeah. Feels like three votes. It does feel like... <laughs> Is that how we are? Is that how we I get are? a vote? <laughs> yeah. Oh, where is it? I, I want to walk that back real quick. Where's my vote? I want one. <laughs> Do you know what a vote is? Yeah. What's a vote? It's something that I have that we just said I get. Or if he's ex uh, if he's taking money from the Empire, then there's got to be some sort of paper trail. There's papers everywhere. All we have to do is present Morrow with proof. Does that mean we have to go look through papers? Yes. yes. Does that mean we have to go and look through papers? I have not done 
any reading since the summer where we read. Uh. That sound, you sound hurt? No, that's a normal reaction. All right, well, let's, in the, the couple hours that we have, let's go to the library and do some research. You know, they don't keep, like, paperwork in the library, right? No, I don't know that. Where do they keep the paperwork? They don't keep paperwork in the library. Well, where do they keep it, Fox? Not in the library. I don't know if I don't know if the fox can read, but I'm gonna press to digitate like just a little like the office right in front of his paws, so he just give him the answer. Huh? Shapes! Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Where'd they the, come from? This is why he doesn't get a vote. Uh, what happened to my vote? I want him to have a vote because he tends to agree with me. Well, that's just because he likes your intonation because it's very confident. Yeah. You see how he just kept saying the, the same words that you said with yeah. the same inflection. I like it when people say stuff they know. <laughs> I know a lot of things, and I like to say them. We should, let's, I mean, should we all go to the office? Should we, do, do you want to go oh. to the office and we'll run some sort of distraction, or? I think if I go, uh, people will notice and talk to me. So, are you sneaky? Be sneaky? I mean, I'm the strongest. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, well, Fox and I, I can go check it out. Yes. Or perhaps, what? Great. What, you're giving me a look, yeah? Oh, oh you like check it? Check it out, I love it. I can also still, uh, and I, without using it, I would, I have the ability to become invisible, so I think I make just my hands disappear, or my right hand. That. What? Do that. Yes. All over. Okay. Yeah. And then sneak into the office. Sure. And bring me all the papers. Okay. This is a perfect plan. Yeah? Great. Uh, should I go now? <laughs> oh, okay. He needs a couple hours. Maybe should we run a distract? Do you want a distraction faction? Oh, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> wow, Perfect. Look at that. A plan. And while he's distracted, we'll get his vote. <laughs> <laughs> it's not wrong. Yeah, I mean, it's, we can. There, there are all ways to accomplish what you said, but uh, this is not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I mean. This is what I mean. Oh, yes. We'll happen. Yeah. You, uh, you head out into the hall. Uh, yeah. I guess give me an investigation check to just find, like, the bursar's office. I'm going to assist Ame because I don't want to roll. All right. <laughs> Ame has help, has advantage on this roll. Right. That's, uh, that's not bad. That is a seven, uh, 18. An 18. Good job. Uh, yeah. You wander the halls for a while. As you are wandering them, go ahead and give me a group of... I'll, I'll say this is like a performance check to just look like you're like you're not snooping, to look like you're going where you want to be going. Six. Ten. Twenty. Ah! Okay, okay. <laughs> you are at, before you can find this place, um, you, uh, uh, some, with some mages, some wizards are go, um, Apprentice Archmage, do you require any assistance? Oh, I was just sort of taking a little, a little tour. Well, we could provide a tour for you if you'd like. That would be lovely. Great. Uh, so now you have some people flanking you and sort of watching you. Um, as you do, they start looking around. Um, there are several uh, experimentoriums, various laboratories. You see as you're walking along, uh, they show you a couple different places. You see that there's one chamber that kind of opens up that heads to a big pair of double doors that you can see is in a different courtyard where like wagons and stuff drop people off. You see through the open doors of that area, looking at like a gravel courtyard, there's mages of the Azure Battalion, like strong blue clothing that kind of looks similar, honestly, to like what you're wearing. But you see that they have St like war staves that are mounted into like leather straps holstered across their back. So picture like bright blue coats with war staves like holstered over their shoulders, you know, they, like crystalline rings on their hands, uh, large sort of uh, sky blue wagons that have a bunch of stuff. And you see that they uh, have a bunch of barrels that are like quintuple iron banded with runes 
carved into the iron and you see that there is sort of this big warehouse area. They are packing this almost like venomous lime green salt into these barrels uh, to take it out towards the wall. Um, you see that there is, uh, in a different chamber, uh, you see some of these white robed wizards. Uh, there is a table of what looks like small slender wands made of coral that have like pink and purple hues to them and these enormous aquariums uh, of salt water. The big giant, and like Olympic swimming pool style tanks. And you see that the mages are performing prestidigitations uh, in the water. Uh, go ahead and give me a, uh, just a luck check, Priya, uh, uh, as we move through here. Two. Um, uh, yeah, you see them just sort of swinging the the wands at the water. Just swinging them, you know? Swinging them. You don't see anything too big head. They're just sort of like moving. And you see that as they move, are, are doing that, um, they're prestidigitating with the wands. The, a little bit of the water will ripple. And they just put the coral wand uh, onto a large pile of wands. Uh, but you also see that the pile they're building um, there's a sm very, very small pile on a separate table that has these beautiful, creamy marble cases that are hinged and clasped that are about the size of the wand. Uh, but none of them are putting any in there. Um, uh, I definitely want to just sort of, I couldn't begin to know what you're doing with these tanks. May I ask? Oh, um a little bit of playing around with uh, currents. Uh, mm. There's a, some small number of these wands uh, that we are creating uh, seem to be able to channel uh, a deeper form of magic. Uh, so we're testing them out right now. 99 out of 100 uh, don't fail, you fail to properly channel the prestidigitation. But uh, if we were to wait for a, a little longer, uh, it's possible that we would get lucky today and one of the wands that has sort of come out from the derrick would be, uh, you know, uh, worth it. And when they work, oh my goodness, you can see, and she, she points to these big sort of like glass shields that you realize are like splash zone shields yeah. almost as like there's a gallery of wizards sort of clocking and looking. Um, so you see that she goes, that would be uh, the ideal. Every per, Once or twice a day, they do find one and it is extremely dramatic when they do. I cannot wait to understand more of what you're doing, but I don't want to ruin a surprise. Um, you see that uh, they walk away from here. Um, and after a little while, you wa start walking through a place and you see that she just, the, the wizard guiding you points over and says, uh, and this is the administrative wing, obviously very humdrum. Uh, and then she- I have to use the bathroom. <laughs> Well, uh, there I is... I need to relieve myself. Naturally. And there is a privy. Uh, let me actually bring you to... There is no need. Very well. There's a privy right down there at the corner. Um, and I will uh, catch up to the rest of you. Mm. You see the fox goes, I have to do that too. Come along. Yes, of course. Fox. It's only natural. As long as he doesn't fox do it on the rug. tucks in behind Ursuline. Hey, hey, never let him make you take a bath. <laughs> it's bad, it's right? It's the fucking worst. <gasps> I knew it was bad. You'll never smell the same again. Wait, did you ever take a bath? One time. I've done it a couple of times. But, but once you have it, once you do it once, you can't take it back. <laughs> it's a it's a dark it's a it's it's a sli it's a steep slope. Is that why you smell like plants? Even don't though do, don't do this to me, man. <laughs> don't don't other me like that. No, I'm just saying. Yes, it's why I smell like plants. Okay, I'll never take a bath. You got it. Never. No matter how hard they try, and they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna try hard. Besides, it sounds like a bath is just licking yourself, which I can already do. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, you're all right. You're all right. I get it. Uh, and he sort of snoops along behind you. Um, 
go ahead and give me investigation. You're going to get a help action from the fox. Here. Right. <laughs> this is such a bad idea. <laughs> I get a plus one on an 18. That's a 19. <gasps> Let's go. You're in one of these sort of marble mm -hmm. uh, quartz hallways. There is a... The doors here are no longer like, oh, you're walking through. It's like the administrative wing. So there's just like these sort of lovely uh, red wood, like polished red doors in here that you see sort of accompany the robes of the administrative wizards that are in here. Mm -hmm. And you walk up and see an office and see the guild mage pain. So it's like, in other words, the guy is sitting in a place that belongs to him clearly. Okay. One of those red doors opens into a very small office. We're talking like eight foot by eight foot. It's just like a seat, his desk, scrolls and things up, surrounded by ledgers. Mm -hmm. And you see the guild mage in a sort of high backed uh, chair that is re the red leather, but is one of those sort of rotating floating chairs. Mm -hmm. uh, turns up and just sees you approaching. So as you approach- Shit. <laughs> uh, as you approach, he's there in his office. Okay, great. Uh <laughs> Uh, hello? Is there something I can do to be of assistance to you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is at this moment that Ursulon realizes he doesn't know at all what the plan was. That it, he doesn't know. He's now waiting for the distraction faction to take <laughs> effect. It doesn't. So, uh... Uh, hello? Yes. I am... An... Uh, the... The protector of uh, Citadel Wizard Suvi. Mm hmm. <laughs> she wants to talk to you. Give me a <laughs> deception or persuasion here. Okay. 15. He looks up at you. And goes, uh, very well. Um, I will go and speak with her. Um, you see, he gets up uh, to go, uh, presumably follow you out to Suvi and begins to close the door behind him as he is, uh, as he's going to join you. Wait. Um, uh, I put my hand on his shoulder. I take a step closer. He looks immediately like something's about to pop off when you touch him. Oh, sorry. I didn't. I just, I know. What do you know? <laughs> Your situation. Excuse me? <laughs> Where's the fox? <laughs> the fox looks. The fox is like gives you a look like I can bail you out of here if you want. Uh, I I want him to go in the room. You want the fox to go in the room? Yeah. Uh, the fox is gonna make a stealth check. It's cocked. Okay, a fox slinks into the room. It's gonna be all right. Follow me. <laughs> uh, give me persuasion with <laughs> with disadvantage. Right. Six. He, he turns and uh, he says, he says, I'm gonna be very clear in this moment with you, Bear. What is it that you are hinting at? I would speak clearly and honestly because you are in our chantry and as much power as a Citadel wizard might wield, I am given provision to do whatever is necessary in order to protect my sanctum. Will Gallows. Um, he, <laughs> uh, he looks at you and goes, I don't know that name. What are you speaking of in this moment and what have you heard? Just the knowledge that a, imperial, a citadel wizard wields. Did Will Gallows send you here? You might want to go talk to wiz the wizard Suvi. This is all I have been asked to pass along. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> this was the opposite of why I was sent. So here's what's going to happen. 
I and I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little bit of an unusual thing by just fully like tipping my hand towards the you my players. Um, this guy's either gonna hear the reason and what you're saying, which is that he's just heard something really fucking scary, and if he's smart, he'll go get more information, or he might be so rattled that he's just gonna try to kill you right here <gasps> and now. Oh my god. Okay. So what I want you to do for me, Lou, is just to roll a luck Don't check. Don't do this, man. <laughs> Don't make me roll. I want you to roll a luck check, and you get to call high or low. You call I, high or low for me. You said it. I don't know if you said it during the session. It is the craziest level one player shit <laughs> of all time that it, I feel like is happening right now. Yeah. Of like, I felt like we had a plan. Then yeah. the uh, moment to enact the plan happened. Then it didn't. Then it, you realized we had no plan. Now... I'm scared. <laughs> hey, we, Bria, Erica, Lou, know what's up. Yeah. We're smart. Yeah. yeah. Our characters are little dummies. Oh, my God. When you just had him sitting in the office, I was like, well, this, and then he saw me. I was like, well, okay. <laughs> Why would a guy be in his office? <laughs> that's, that's the crazy thing. Why would he be there? Okay. Team distraction. Yeah. What are you doing? I, guess, during I, this say, time? Like, I don't I didn't want to like sort of meta game and be like, you know, because I also have telepathy with Fox, right? With yeah, 100 feet. Yeah. Um, so I, at some point I was gonna sort of jump in and, and you know ask, hey, uh, how's it going? <laughs> I'm in. Oh, nice. I'm in the room. <laughs> I'm in the room. Okay. This guy's got no idea I'm in this room. Okay. Hey. Tiffy. Uh, minor illusion. The tree uh, with the, the desert tree is on fire. Oh, I... This tour has been lovely. Well, you know what? I... Fire! Fire! Okay. Okay, so you could do a minor illusion of a tree on fire in the yeah, hallway. Fire. Hi, why don't you go put out that fire? I'm gonna go put out the fire! Thank you. And I will continue the tour, or should I what? also help with the fire? You I'm so should sorry. Also help with the fire. So your friend cast a spell to create an illusion of a tree and on fire. It, yes. And now, do you need help dispelling the illusion? Oh, yes, please. Okay, why don't we... This has been such a lovely tour. We're going to call it here. Thank I'm you sorry, so much. I'm sorry, I was bored. Oh. Go. I will follow you in a second while I wrap this up. And now we're going to roll this roll over here. <laughs> Please. Higher low, what are you doing? Don't kill my character. <laughs> Higher low. I feel like I've never been in a situation... Oh, like, I, I haven't felt this way playing d, d in a long time. Fuck me. Wait, before you... Okay. Do you want me to say it out loud? Do you need... Do you need do. that information? I do. You can't just look at my crestfallen <laughs> face and know the reality. It's um, a six. Guildmage Pain takes a curved, steely dagger from his belt, holds a fist out in his offhand, and across the outside of his upper arm, right where his tricep meets the bicep in his arm, he slashes through the fabric and cuts his arm so that it's bleeding and the knife clatters to the ground. <sighs> you struck me. And he reaches a <gasps> hand out for your throat. Oh. As lightning crackles over his fingers and you see the pupils recede into electric blinding whiteness in his eyes and he smiles ready to end your life and that's all for this episode no! of the wizard of the witch and the wild one oh my god it's about to be just the wizard and the witch baby oh, no! <laughs> that was lou wilson as ursulon erica ishii as ame abria iyengar as suvi and brennan lee mulligan as everyone and everything else. Worlds Beyond Numbered is edited, designed, and scored by Taylor Moore at Fortunate Horse, with additional sound design from Michael Gelfie Studios. For even more like this, join us on our Patreon. We'll see you there.